high-stakes legislation approving the Keystone Pipeline takes center stage in the Senate tomorrow after flying through the House this past Friday. Will the Senate and the President greenlight this project six years in the making? We're asking Republican Senator John Hoven of North Dakota, who recently introduced the legislation. Well, not recently. Last year introduced the legislation. He joins us now by telephone. Senator, thanks for being with us today. I want to start with your expectations with what's going to happen to this legislation. Will the Senate pass it along? And then will the president sign it? Well, Jerry, good to be with you. I, I think the Senate likely will pass it tomorrow. We've got 59 votes that have publicly said they're committed. I, I think there's a number of maybe. So I think we'll get to the 60 tomorrow. Uh, but I think then it's very likely the president will veto the legislation. Wow. Okay. So I'm curious about the Senate vote, because is this a political vote or is this, are these people saying we, we're all behind Keystone or is this something to save Mary Landro? Well, we're going to get enough votes either now or in the new Congress. So, I mean, I, I think that Senator Reid knew that we had enough votes and, and we'd get over 60 in the new, uh, in the new Congress. Um, so clearly the timing, as you said, obviously got a lot to do with the race in Louisiana. Uh, but uh, Representative Bill Cassidy, uh, this is a bill I wrote, and right. uh, Senator Landry's a co-sponsor, but Representative Bill Cassidy took the same bill, and the House passed it on Friday. I think we'll pass it tomorrow. In any event, though, I think the president vetoes, and we're back at it in the new Congress. I want to ask you about the president's statements on this uh, legislation, because he said this is something that really just benefits Canada. Do you agree with that? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Look, to build the kind of energy plan that we want for our country, we've got to build the infrastructure to go with it. That means pipelines, that means moving energy by rail, by road. Also, we want to work with Canada and together between the energy we produce in this country and working with Canada, we can get to energy independence and not need to bring in oil from the Middle East or places like Venezuela. And finally, remember, this pipeline will put 100,000 barrels a day of light, sweet Bakken and crude from North Dakota and Montana into this pipeline right off the get-go and of course that's expandable later you know uh, the president has said this is a disaster environmentally and yet his own state department has said this approval or denial it's unlikely uh, to significantly impact the rate of extraction in the oil sands or the continued demand for heavy crude oil climate conditions during the construction period would not differ substantially from current conditions in other words the state department is saying no big impact on the environment uh, why the disconnect between the president and his own State Department? Well, first off, you're absolutely right. We've gone through five environmental impact statements, and they say no significant environmental impact. Now, that, that's pretty clear. And the reason he's saying otherwise is because he's a, a, he opposes the projects. Uh, the project, obviously, I mean, he's held it up for six years. That's very clear. How many jobs? There's a big debate over the number of jobs this pipeline will create. What's your best estimate? Well, there's been a number of estimates, but I take the one that's included in the State Department report in the environmental impact statement, and it indicates about 42,000 jobs. And so, uh, you know, look, it's a job creator. It's about more energy. It's about, you know, really a national security. National security. I guess we'll leave it on that note. Senator Hoven, thank you for coming on the show tonight. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Jerry. Good to be with you.